Tech family, wow. This Alienware X15 is a friggin' awesome laptop. Phenomenal, it is almost perfect, but Dell tripped up at the finish line with some of the most questionable and outright silly product decisions I've ever seen. There is so much to talk about this laptop, so here's how I'm going to do it. I'm first going to tell you how Dell truly nailed the basics. All the most important things that you want in a high-powered, portable laptop they got right. Comfortable keyboard, accurate trackpad, great screen. The laptop does not feel uncomfortably warm when using it, and it's insanely powerful. Plus, it looks stunning, and it's portable. Then, at the end of this video, I'm literally going to give their product management team a hiding for the stupid decisions they made that has prevented this laptop becoming the absolute gold standard. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video, you like what you watched, don't forget to smash that like button, get subscribed, and click the notification bell. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these videos, but it makes my mum very happy. My unit has the Intel i7-11800H processor, 32GB of RAM, a 512GB SSD, the RTX 3070, and the 1440 resolution 240Hz refresh rate screen. The laptop looks amazing, seriously sexy as hell. Honestly, next time I go on a date, I'm bringing this with me. It is so slim, and the lighting looks completely on point. I often find gaming laptops with RGB lights look tacky, but in this case, the Alienware X15, it just is pure class. I'm blown away. Best looking laptop I've seen. The keyboard deck is very rigid, but the screen has a little flex to it, but nothing that I'd be worried about. It's very hard to take the back off the laptop. Gone are the days of Alienware's being easy to open. Even though there are only six screws and the back two pop the cover off for supposed easy access, there are clips holding the back in that are so tight I think I may have bent my cover trying to take it off, unfortunately. So even though the SSD is upgradable and there is a second M.2 slot for a second SSD, I would strongly advise you get it configured the way you want it when you purchase it. You definitely don't want to damage your expensive laptop. Anyway, when I did get the back off, I was delighted to see four fans, a complete thermal redesign, and as you'll see later, it works. This is the kind of gutsy stuff that brands like Razer, who struggle with their chassis feeling hot, should be doing. By the way, the RAM wasn't replaceable, but this is a super thin laptop with the option to upgrade to 32 gig, so I'll give it a pass. The laptop's weight is pretty good at 5.1 pounds. The surprisingly compact 240 watt charger weighs 1.4 pounds. In comparison to the popular Legion 5 Pro, this laptop's overall carry weight, including its charger, is substantially less. This makes the X15 one of the more portable, high-powered gaming laptops around. Portability is further improved because the X15 supports USB-C charging, so for days that I likely won't need its powerful graphics, I can just bring a smaller, lighter USB-C charger with me. Anyway, the Alienware X15 is just below the max weight that I'd feel comfortable carrying around in a backpack all day. The keyboard is excellent. Honestly, I'd literally forgotten what a good keyboard on a laptop feels like. It's been that long. This one is as good as they get. Good travel with a satisfying click. The trackpad is also very good, smooth and accurate. And unlike other PC manufacturers where the laptop's cursor can jump a little when you click it because the physical trackpad depresses, this one is accurate even when clicking. My only gripe is that the trackpad is not large enough for a laptop of this size. Dell are using a trackpad that is even smaller than on their tiny 13-inch XPS. Perhaps they deliberately avoided using their larger, infamous one from the XPS 15 that many of us reviewers received broken. Honestly, everything you see or touch about this laptop just feels quality. All right, let's get into performance of this laptop as it puts up some awesome scores that I can't wait to share with you. The laptop's performance and fan profile, including two overclocking settings, can be configured in Alienware's command setter software. I tested these settings on the default balance mode and the highest possible performance mode, including overclocks with fans on full speed. In Geekbench, which tests a range of CPU tasks, this laptop's single core scores are better than any PC laptop I've ever tested, even edging out the HP Omen for 2021 with its AMD Ryzen 5800H processor. Multi-core scores are even better. In Cinebench R23, which tests the performance when the processor is maxed out, the Alienware X15 again mopped the floor with the competition. Please take note that the max performance mode doesn't really increase CPU performance that much. Switching gears. When I ran Cinebench R23 on a loop for 10 minutes to test whether the laptop's cooling was up to the task, I received an 
excellent result. Minimal drop in performance, showing that the four fans inside this laptop are doing their job. When under full load, the laptop CPU initially drew 107 watts of power, but then dropped to a sustained 92 watts. The CPU ran at around 3.9 GHz all core and hit a toasty 100 degrees Celsius, even with the fans on max speed. So Alienware are really pushing this laptop to its limit. But as you'll see later, it doesn't mean you'll actually feel the heat. For PC Mark 10, which tests office application performance, I recorded exceptional scores. The only laptop that beat it was the Asus G15 with the Ryzen 9 processor. However, my gut is the SSD inside this laptop, which is fast, but not the fastest, may have held back the X15 from taking the crown. Let's talk about gaming and see how the RTX 3070 running at a max of 110 watts performs. In Firestrike, it was the best laptop I've ever tested, beating out the RTX 3080 equipped Razer Blade from earlier this year. Same goes for Time Spy. It even came close to touching the 3080 equipped blade in the ray tracing benchmark Port Royal. By the way, I know the latest Razer Blade does add an additional 10 watts to their 3080, so that newer one will probably take the lead. But it's pretty impressive that this laptop with its RTX 3070 is performing so well. When I took a look at video editing, this laptop cut through my toughest video projects like butter. In fact, it had the fastest export time of any laptop I've ever tested in my large video export in Premiere Pro. Moral of the story, this laptop is crazy fast. What's good is that Dell achieves it without the laptop feeling too hot to the touch. When the laptop is under load, the laptop's keyboard deck does get a little warm, but nothing uncomfortable, and the palm rests remain very cool. Temperature development in this laptop is very specific, with it getting very hot in the top left and right edges, but that is nowhere near where your hands will be. The fan noise on balance mode was surprisingly quiet, although the fans are a little high pitched, so you will hear them. That being said, you won't need headphones to game on this laptop, and it does not sound like a jet engine like other gaming laptops. Yay. In fact, given that there was not a huge difference in performance between balance mode and the highest performance mode with the fans at full speed, I'd strongly advise you to just run the laptop on balance mode for reduced fan noise, which is a blessing. Now, in daily use like browsing the web, this laptop remains comfortably cool to the touch. It literally doesn't get warm at all. My Razer Blade 15, even for basic web browsing, gets uncomfortably warm. Same with my Asus G15. This is a very big win for the X15. This laptop is also pretty quiet in those conditions. I'd rarely hear the fan going, and when I did, it wasn't disturbing. Heck, even in Zoom calls, which can cause most laptops fans to spin up, this one was pretty quiet. Rounding out performance, I was worried that when under load, the power supply would not deliver enough power to the laptop and it would eat into the laptop's battery. I'm glad to report that that did not happen. Also, this laptop is equipped with Wi-Fi 6E, and now that I have a Wi-Fi 6E router, I can appreciate the insane performance it offers. Seriously, look at these speeds. All right, let's talk about the display. I have the 1440 240Hz panel and it's a very good one. Around 400 nits of brightness on a non-reflective matte panel means it is bright enough for almost any environment you'd use it in. Color reproduction is excellent. Honestly, my only nit is that it's a tiny bit grainy and the contrast could be better. But guys, I'm really nitpicking here. This is a 9 out of 10 display. Sound is very good, loud and clear. Even when I use the laptop on a blanket like you would do if you were watching a movie in bed, the sound was still loud enough. It's not quite as good as the MacBook Pro 16 speakers though. I'm sure why PC manufacturers still can't compete with that laptop sound, even though it came out in 2019. But anyway, the Alienware sound is definitely pretty good. The laptop has Windows Hello facial recognition and it worked well. And I love that it came with an ethernet dongle that supports 2.5 gigabit ethernet. All right, so you've now heard me gush over this laptop and honestly, it's probably the best laptop I've ever used. It just gets all the most important things that you want on a day-to-day -day basis right. But for some reason, the product management team at Dell have decided they didn't want to make the perfect laptop and stop short at the finish line. Let me explain these silly, silly things. The secondary function symbols don't light up. Seriously, even finding a question mark in a dark room is a pain in the butt. Razer had this issue in their laptops and resolved it. Gigabyte also had this issue in their aero line and we complained bitterly about it for three years. This is completely unacceptable in a laptop in this price range and it is an epic fail on Dell's behalf. How hard is it to have a basic checklist when designing a laptop? Can you see the secondary function keys in the dark? That being said, since the keys are individually led, you can solve this by changing certain keys to a different color, so you know which key is which, like, say, the brightness up and down. 
Next, why is there a micro SD card reader in this laptop instead of a full sized one? This is a sizable 15 inch laptop that would be perfect for content creation. No professional video creator or photographer that I've ever met uses micro SD cards. It's so frustrating that we have to use a dongle because of this useless port. Continuing my rant, ports on the back of this laptop are a great idea for sure, especially for ports you don't need to access a lot such as power and ethernet. It keeps them neatly tucked away. But for ports you do, like USB and the SD card reader, these should be on the sides. Reaching around the back to try and plug something in and out that I can't see is really frustrating. What makes it much worse on this laptop is the pretty light on the back also makes it extremely difficult to see where the ports are. That's because this light is blindingly bright and the ports are recessed. Next, why is there a crap 720 webcam on this laptop? This is an extremely expensive, newly designed laptop for 2021. There is simply no excuse to not have a high quality webcam in it. For heaven's sake, even Razer has a 1080 webcam in their latest refresh of the Blade 15. Moving on, why isn't there a super fast PCIe 4.0 SSD in this laptop? This laptop cost me almost 3000 US dollars, including the tax. I shouldn't be missing out on the latest tech like this. Lastly, shutting the lid doesn't put this laptop to sleep, at least not for ages. Yep, you heard me right. Seriously, it drives me nuts. Say I'm using this laptop before going to bed. I shut the lid but can't get to sleep because the bright blue lights are still on and the fans are going. How the hell does this kind of issue occur in 2021? It's ludicrous. So look, None of what I mentioned above is a deal breaker, but it's frustrating as these little things that could have been easily avoided haven't. And that prevents this phenomenally awesome laptop from being the best laptop in the world. Anyway, before I finish, I do want to mention a couple of other issues. Even with Nvidia's Advanced Optimus, battery life was rough. I scored four hours exactly. I have no doubt you could hit about five to six hours though if you dim the screen further. It was still plenty bright and did some other tweaks, say, like turning off the RGB lights. Still, this is not a laptop you are going to want to get if you want long battery life. Lastly, Linux support. It wasn't great. I tried Fedora 34 and Ubuntu 21.04. Neither worked out of the box. The trackpad and Wi-Fi weren't recognized on either. This doesn't mean you can't run Linux on this machine. It just means it isn't as easy like on other laptops. Okay, so let's wrap. I was originally going to give this laptop a glowing recommendation saying why I personally will buy it over all the competition. I mean, you know, high powered portable gaming laptops. But I decided to re-record the ending. That's because after using this laptop while editing this very video, I feel I need to turn down my glowing recommendation a notch. There are two issues that drove me nuts that I have mentioned but want to re-emphasize. The first is fan noise. As I said, it is pretty quiet for a gaming laptop, but if you are in a quiet room just casually using the laptop, say browsing the web, you can often hear the fan's high-pitched noise. After a while, it just got to me. My personal HP Omen may be louder under load, but at least for everyday tasks, you don't notice the fans because they aren't high-pitched. This laptop, you do. The second is the laptop not sleeping when the lid is shut. Literally, nothing I could do would get this laptop to sleep. It drove me up the wall. I literally can't keep it in a room I sleep in. Even when the RGB lights finally turn off, I can still hear the fans going. It's really disturbing. If they do fix this one, or I find a way to fix it, I'll post a solution in the description below, so make sure to check that out. There is no other way of describing the Alienware X15 other than how I did at the beginning of the video. Dell tripped at the finish line. They came so close to creating the perfect laptop but just didn't. I will probably still buy one for myself as I do think the pros of this laptop, especially the performance, comfortable keyboard and cool feeling chassis are what I will personally appreciate. it. But it is so frustrating and disappointing that I have to deal with this long list of cons. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel as I always post videos about what laptops I end up using myself and if material things change, I'll update you. On that note, please do us a solid and smash that like button and turn on the notification bell. I would definitely appreciate it. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok for behind the scenes coverage and sneak peeks at upcoming tech, links below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.